Like a garden snail leaves a trail behind A story snail leaves a tail behind Share our stories and you may find You can tell a story too Hello everyone! I'm Amy And I'm Chip And we are two storytellers from Snail Tales And we'd love to share some stories with you Oh, because hey, that's what storytellers do. Yarn tootin' we do. And these Hang on, yarn tootin'? Don't you mean darn tootin'? No, yarn tootin', because that's what we do. We toot yarns. You know, like spinning a tail. Oh, I see. All right. But these stories are... Wait, why do we say spinning a tail? <laughs> Look, we're, we're trying to keep this short and sweet, remember? Yeah, but I want to know now. I mean, haven't you ever heard of people saying that they're going to spin you a tale or weave you a story or follow the thread of a story? Why do we talk like that? Where do you think it comes from? Well, look, if you really want to know, I'll share the story with you in a moment. But right now, we need to make sure all of these folks know that these stories are powered by two things. Yarn tootin'. And the first thing is a power that everybody has. For example, put up your hand if you know what a knife and fork look like. <laughs> you see, you've just used the power of your imagination to make a knife and fork appear inside your head. That's right. Everyone has the power of the imagination, and your imagination can create much better pictures than you'll find on TV or in films or in apps. And if you use your imagination, you'll be practising one of the most important things a human being can do. Making things. That's right. If you can make pictures in your head, then you can make all sorts of other things as well, like games. And answers to puzzles. Mm. And plans for the future. Buildings for Minecraft. And friends in new places. Your bed. And videos and... hang on. Making your bed. Well, yeah, you know, with tools and instructions. DIY. Oh, yes, I suppose imagination helps with DIY too. Mm -hmm. The imagination helps with everything, really. But the second thing that powers these stories is your teachers. Yarn tootin'. We can't share stories with you unless your teachers let us. And to make sure that they let us, you need to show that you're listening. One way you can do that is to sit quietly while the video is on. But another way that you can show you're listening is by joining in with us. There are going to be times in these stories where we ask you to join in with us. And if you do, your teachers will know that you're listening. And that means they're more likely to let us share stories with you again. You can join in, actually, right from the very beginning, can't you? For example, when we say, hello, everyone, you can say back to us, hello, Amy and Chip. Shall we have a practice at that? Good idea. We'll go right back to the start of the video and we'll say, hello everyone, and you can say, hello Amy and Chip, or something like that. Shall we give it a go? You can tell a story too. Hello, hello everyone. everyone. Ah, but sometimes it might be a little bit different. You see, Amy and I won't always both be in the same assembly, so you won't always have to say, hello Amy and Chip. Let's see if you're quick enough to spot the difference and say the right words, Hello Amy or Hello Chip. Shall we give it a try? All right then. Hello everyone. But you know, sometimes we might not use hello. We might say something like, Hi everyone, which means you would have to say, Hi Chip, or Buongiorno everyone, which means you would have to say, Buongiorno Chip. Listen carefully and see how you do with this next one. Bonjour, everyone. And you know what else? Sometimes we might use a different voice. Like this one. So see if you can say hello, Amy and Chip in the voice that we're using when we come back. Ready? Hello, everyone. Good try. I think you've just about got it. Yarn tootin'. You really like that phrase, don't you? I do now. And you said you were going to tell me why we say it. I did. And actually, I think you can help me tell this story. Oh, how? Well, you see, this is a story that I think you know. Because it comes from the land of Africa, and it's about a particularly famous spider known as Anansi. Oh, 
yes! Now, don't get worried, because a Nancy comes from a time when spiders looked a lot like us. They had a head up here, two arms and a body. The only difference was that they had six legs. No, wait a minute. Eight legs. No, six. Because think about it. Six legs and two arms make eight limbs. Oh, yeah, I get it. But at the start of this story, there were no stories in the world because they were all kept up in the sky by the sky goddess Nayambe. That really annoyed Anansi because he wanted to be able to tell some stories around the world, especially stories about Anansi. He really wanted to tell stories of all of his adventures. So right at the beginning of this story, he went to the top of the tallest tree in the forest and called out, Oh, great Nayambe! We all really love you down here. You are wonderful, especially when you do brilliant things like sharing the stories with us. And Nayambe said, Little spider, are you trying to trick me? I will never give you the stories. Not until you bring me the wasps with stings like fire. The snake that could swallow you whole. And the leopard with teeth like spears. And Anansi said, OK, I'll get back to you. And he went back down the tree. Now, put your hand up if you don't like wasps. Now imagine that those wasps have stings like fire. Put your hand up if you wouldn't want to be anywhere near one of those creatures. But Anansi was desperate for the stories. So he got a bottle of water and an umbrella and went off in the forest in search of those wasps. Now, do you see my hands? When they're close together like this, we shouldn't be able to hear anything. But as I bring my hands apart, I want you to start making the sound of wasps. And the further my hands go apart, the louder the sound will get until I bring them together again. Are you ready? Here we go. And when the sound got that loud, and Nancy knew the wasps were really close. So he took the lid off his bottle, poured the water all over himself, then ran out in front of the wasps with stings like fire and said, Oh wasps, it's terrible! There's a big storm coming! Look how wet I am! And I've got an umbrella! Now I know you guys, you really don't like water, do you? So you probably want to find a place to hide. Oh, I know! Why don't you hide in my bottle? Well, the wasps thought that this was a brilliant idea, so they all hurried into Anansi's bottle. So watch my hands again. <laughs> and Anansi quickly put the lid on the bottle, then carried it all the way to the top of that tallest tree and said, Here you are, Nayambe, the wasps with stings like fire. Very impressive little spider. But you've still got to bring me the snake that could swallow you whole and the leopard with teeth like spears. And Anansi said, I'm on it. And he went back down the tree. Now hands up if you don't like snakes. Well, now imagine that this snake is so big it could swallow you whole. Put your hand up if you wouldn't like that. But Anansi, he was desperate for the stories. So he found a really long stick and went off in the forest in search of that snake. OK, now this time I want you to make a snake sound as I bring my hands apart. Are you ready? And when the sound got that loud, and Nancy knew the snake was really close. So he held up the stick and said, I'm sure I'm right. Yeah, I'm definitely right. I must be right. And the snake slithered around the trees and said, What are you going on about, Nancy? And Nancy said, Well, he hello, snake that could swallow you whole. Um, well, I found this stick earlier today, and my wife and I, we were arguing about how, well... I think that you are longer than the stick, but she thinks that actually the stick is longer than you. 
and actually now you're here, I'm, I'm really not sure. Well, the snake said, there's a simple way to find out. Lay the stick on the ground and I will lay next to it. If I am longer than the stick, you can go home to tell your wife you are right. But if the stick is longer than me, I will eat you. Well, Nancy thought that was fair enough. He put the stick on the ground, the snake lay alongside it, and then Nancy said, uh, oh, oh, it's, it's too hard, I can't work it out, because every time you wriggle a bit, the stick moves. So the snake said, well, why don't you tie me to the stick? Then if I move, the stick will move with me. And Nancy thought that was a brilliant idea. So he spun some of his sticky thread and used it to tie up the snake to the stick. And then he picked up the stick with the snake attached to it and went all the way to the top of the tallest tree and said, Here you are, Nayambe, the snake that could swallow you whole. Very clever, little spider. But you've still got to bring me the leopard with teeth like spears. And Anansi said, be right back. So he went back down the tree. Amy, how long do you reckon a spear is? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, probably about that. Now, if that is the size of this leopard's teeth, how big do you think the leopard is? I don't think it would fit inside this room. Yeah, probably not. But Anansi was desperate for the stories. So he went and got a spade and he started digging a really huge hole. And then he covered it up with a web. Then he covered the web up with some sticks and some leaves and right in the middle placed some of the leopard's favourite food. And then, well then he was really tired. So he went off for a nap. The next day, Anansi went back to his trap and found all the sticks and leaves had fallen into the hole. From inside, he could hear a voice. Help! Help! So Anansi said, Is that you, O oh leopard with teeth like spears? Yes! Is that you, Anansi? Yes! Don't worry! I'll get you out! Hold on! So Anansi looked around and saw one of those tall rubber trees and using his sticky feet to hold onto the ground, he used his sticky hands to get the top of the rubber tree and bend it down and poke the top of it into the hole. And he said, here you are, leopard, uh, grab this stick and I'll, I'll pull you out. Have you got it? Okay, here we go. And Anansi let go of the tree. And the rubber tree shot up right again, shooting the leopard up into the sky, where it landed straight in the lap of... Nayambe. Well done, little spider. You have now brought me everything I asked for. The wasps. With stings like... Fire. fire. The snake. That could swallow you whole. whole. And the leopard with teeth, teeth like, like spears. spears. And so Nayambe kept her promise and gave Anansi and the world all of the stories. So that's why we can tell stories today. Oh, that is such a good story. But hang on, how, how does that explain the whole spinning tails thing? Ah, well, you know, in order to make thread, we, we spin it, don't we? Well, we, we spin the flax, don't we, to make it? Well, what do spiders do to make their thread? Oh, they spin their webs, don't they? That's right. <sighs> Yarn tootin' they do! But, you know, that's not only where that expression comes from, it's also where we get stories. And I'm sure you could have learned a few other things in that story too, couldn't you? Oh, you mean like, um, you don't have to be big to be clever. Exactly. Or, in order to get something good, you do have to struggle for a bit. Yarn tootin'! And you know that's the great thing about stories. You can learn so much from them, all the time having great fun. Yarn tootin'! 
why don't you go and have a chat with your teachers and your friends about what you managed to learn from that story? Because right now, I think it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, um... Cheerio! cheerio. And, and we, we hope, hope to, to hear, hear your, your story, story soon! soon.